What's going on guys? Today we are back and today we are working on the fire restoration project. My 1989 Toyota pickup named Berto. <laughs> Brought to you in part by Overland Outfitters. Let's start off this video with a real quick recap. For those of you who are new, this is my 1989 Toyota pickup. Until this happened. Long story short, I was doing a V8 swap, and I went to go start it. A leaky injector found some sparky sparky, and bam, my truck lit on fire. I've since gutted the truck inside and out, cleaned up the fire damage in the engine bay, and painted it. And that brings us to today's task, fixing the interior. Luckily on the interior, most of the fire was contained to the factory sound deadening and in insulation, both of which I've dealt with and removed in a previous video. So realistically, to prep the interior, all it should take is a good wire wheel and sanding. In theory, anyways. So in this corner here, there's a whole bunch of factory like silicone, um, and I happen to notice a bit of rust on the edge of it. Uh, so... <laughs> I decided to clean up the silicone and discovered this massive hole in the corner of the cab. But you know what, that's going to be super easy to fix while everything is apart here, so I'm going to attack that now. Over here on the driver's side, so this is right under where the slave cylinder goes through the firewall here. You can see there's a bit of holes. So yeah, I'm going to cut all of this out, I'm going to cut that out, and uh, weld in some new sheet metal. Over the past couple days, I have been working on the interior of the truck, and let me tell you, I am really liking the turnout so far. So in general, the floor of my truck is actually still in really, really good shape. And as you can see, this gray line here is where the factory sound deadening was. So I'm assuming the factory must have laid down the sound deadening after the primer stage and then painted over top of it. And because the floor is in such good shape, that is exactly what I've been doing here to replace it. So essentially what I did is, because the factory paint on the floor is still in really good shape, I just scuffed it up and cut up these mats. Now these mats are from Amazon, they're an aftermarket sound deadening, and I've been cutting it up and laying it into place around the interior. And I'm actually covering more area than what the factory sound deadening does. And then the last thing I've been doing is taking this European texture rubberized gravel guard and covering the whole floor with it. Like you could see the sound deadening under here, I like this looks so good like I'd say this looks better than factory with the rubberized coating not only does this give it a really good look but it should also act as another layer of sound deadening so yeah I kind of left this open with this is an untouched panel this is halfway done and then completely done kind of had this open so you guys get a really good idea of what it looks like so next it's time to prep this portion of the floor and then all of this can get sprayed
All right, so check it out. The parts truck is here. Now, I got this truck specifically because it has a red interior, but also it happens to be an 89. That means it has a body harness for me. So the plan is to strip the interior, strip the body harness, and then, I mean, I'm essentially done with that truck. harness all right so next up on reassembly is the dash bar now the dash bar was slightly burnt so all I did was took my wire wheel cleaned it all up and now I'm gonna lay down a layer of primer and I think that's as far it's I'm gonna go on the dash bar. It's covered by the dash and honestly, it's unfinished from the factory. So just a layer of primer should do it pretty good. Okay, so check it out. I have successfully moved over the body harness from the parts truck into this thing. So uh, yeah, let's go give it a test. So as you can see, I did install the steering column and the gauge cluster. Well, this is just kind of resting here, but this gives me an opportunity to test the gauge cluster. So when I turn the key on, boom, the gauge cluster comes to life. You see the seatbelt light and my fuel level. And not only that, check it out. Turn the lights on, you see it light up here and up there. So that's good to see. And the last thing I can test is turn signals. Left, right. And now that we've installed the body harness, check out what showed up today. This is a brand new carpet for my pickup. 
And of course, once I was putting the carpet in my truck, my camera's battery decided to die. So honestly, I don't have that much footage of it going in. And all I can tell you really is it fits great, but it took a lot of trimming. Anyways, guys, that wraps up yet another episode of Dirt Garage. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyways, guys, if you like this stuff, please remember to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. You're not gonna wanna miss next week's episode because we finally have another motor for this thing. And if you guys want a sneak peek on what that is, make sure you check out my Instagram, dirt underscore garage. On my Instagram, I do tend to post lots of sneak peeks to upcoming projects and builds weeks or even months in advance to them coming to YouTube. Anyways, guys, we'll Let's see you go. next week. I'm gonna make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. I just work hard, yeah, harder than the rest. Some people say I'm lucky, others say I'm